thanks in full part to Our Lady Rachel Maxey, patron saint of cursed crafts. I too have learned that you can make adorable little guys with violence. Stabby, 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 Today, my friends, we are going to needle felt the most adorable little lobster guy. But this isn't going to be just a little guy to sit on my mantle and give me the warm and fuzzies. Oh no, this guy is going to be turned into a little hat so I can take him with me wherever I go. So, put on your favorite sweater, grab a mug of something warm and comforting, and get ready to get cozy. My regular viewers probably know this, but I've been working the past six months on recreating this fashion plate from 1883, AKA the lobster gown. So the little hat bit is pretty simple. The plan is to make a separate head and two claws. The head itself is going to be a basic cone shape and the claws, well, they're gonna be a little bit more complicated. I'll then put it on a bed of grass and add some dingly antenna and have the world's cutest headpiece. Looking at this thing, it's like the lobster is flat on his back. <laughs> like, woo! Ow! I may have overpurchased the roving. Oh well, I'll find a use for it. Okay, I don't even, I, I, haha! -ha. My goal is to get this about three inches in height and about two inches of girth. And I, I, don't know, should I cut it? I really have no idea what I'm doing. This is a brand new skill. I did practice first. I made a ball, a gingerbread man, and tiny mushrooms. But all that stuff was from kits with directions. So we're in total uncharted territory here. The good news is, is if I screw it up, I've got plenty of roving to work with. I'm just going to cut off this much. That, and then that, that, ha ha. Time to stabby stabby. Stabby 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 stabby. I feel like I'm tempting fate here, just stabbing this without any kind of finger protector, but you know, I've stabbed myself a couple of times with these needles so far and it really hasn't been as bad. I mean, it hurts, but so does having a needle break in your finger. Why are my Victorian clothes always so darn violent? I don't know if you can hear the car noise, but I have the windows open, which is really nice. This is the first day that we've really had any kind of nice weather and uh, it's the 5th of November. It's been so unnaturally hot here. Yay, global warming. We're getting there. It actually doesn't look too bad. Whoa! The one question I have though is like, how do you know when it's done? Like, how do you know when it's stiff enough that you can add the next layer? I don't know. Stabby, 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 I'm not evil. Okay. It's about the height that I want. It's maybe a little long. Okay, I'm gonna squish him down a little, thicken the base a little bit. Cause I know it's gonna get larger when I put the red on. Red time. This is just wool of the Andes from um, Knit Picks. It's actually pretty soft and it's cheap. Knit Picks is cheap, you know. How much do I use? I don't know. That much. Oops. I think I'm gonna just use a little bit of this first and wrap it around the base. Oh, it looks like I'm stabbing Ariel. <laughs> oh, Ariel, your hair is so luscious. Let's jab it. Uh, ah. There is something seriously disturbing about this little piece. I think maybe it's time we covered the tip. Mm -hmm. 
I never thought I'd enjoy needle felting. I got a starter kit like 10 years ago that I never got rid of, and it collected dust until I started this project. But this craft is really cathartic, and if you're a tactile person like me who likes to touch everything, you'd find this really satisfying. So next time someone tells you, no, you don't need to hold on to that kit, you're never gonna use it, guess what? It will come in handy 12 years from now. In a startling turn of events, I just returned to my seat, attempted to sit down, the chair came apart underneath me, I fell down, and got attacked by a giant pile of magazines. Unfortunately, I had not yet had a chance to hit record. <sighs> the life of a cluss. Here is my little nubbin. That was more magazines. I don't know why I have these magazines. I don't even want these magazines. I should get rid of the magazines. With this, Completed, now we can start working on the claws. I think I'm gonna start with the base of the claw. The claw! I'm just gonna make a pillow. Like when you knit something like mitts or sleeves, you really wanna do both claws at the same time instead of one claw completely and then the second claw so you can make sure your proportions stay similar. Time for a cozy fall treat. And now we have two fluffy marshmallows. And this thing. For the chompy bits, I took some of these wispy bits and sort of tacked them down in the general area I wanted. I found it helps to sort of give them a few jabs first before attaching. I will never stop being amused by this. I'd hoped to get all of the claws done before I had to go exercise and become potato jacky, but unfortunately now we're in that part of the year where the sun goes down really early and I have to keep working when I and the light are no longer pretty. The price we pay for not combusting in the heat. Okay, here are the general claw shapes. I'm sort of pushing and tucking on the inside and then curving and flexing on the outside to get the claw curve. They look really honking right now, but we'll rectify that after we cover it with the red wool. If you're new here, hi, I'm Jackie with an I, and I'd love for you to drop down in the comments and to introduce yourself. If you're not new, welcome back. I'd love to know whether you've ever attempted this craft or if it's totally not your bag. I'd kind of sworn that I would never attempt it. It's your fault I'm achieving my inner grandma, Rachel. I'm looking at you. So I got one club claw and one claw almost completely finished and then I proceeded to snap both of my needles in about 20 minutes. And then the election happened. So needless to say, I uh, needed to take a step back from this for a day or two and regroup my energy. However, I'm on quite a tight deadline for this. I am going to be cavorting all weekend at the Texas Renaissance Festival. So we need to get this finished. So even though I look like crap, I just got back from my run. We are going to rally our strength, pretend that the world didn't just light itself in fire and jump in a dumpster and try and get this second claw finished before we lose the light again. New needle, who dis? It's hard to get the tips covered. In retrospect, this took so little roving, I could have gotten away with just one single hank of red. Oh well, you'll live and learn. This needle kit was only about five bucks and it came with a lot of multiple size needles, a little snip, and yes, a handle. They also came with finger guards. Will I use them? Nah. I recognize I'm being flippant about the pain here for two legitimate reasons. One, I play multiple string instruments and therefore have calluses on the tips of my fingers. Two, after years of dance, some of which was professional, my pain tolerance has become so high, it's currently tinkling on people from the top of Mount Fuji. If you don't share either of these experiences, you may find that getting jabbed by a barbed needle is incredibly painful. Only you know if you're a poker or a garter. Okay, let's tackle the club claw. 
You really want to jam that needle in hard at the side joints to get that nice little curve. With my new needles, I learned that different sizes have different jobs. The large needles are there for the initial clumping. Then the medium ones are for the in-between and the small ones for all the fine tuning. Thank you to everyone who has supported me over on Ko-fi. If you're enjoying this video and would like to help support this channel, feel free to check out the link below. Alternatively, you can give this video a thumbs up so that YouTube knows I'm not a wacko. Here are the finished claws. Now for the antenna. I'm sure there's a better way to do this, so if you're a felter and know of an easier way to make little dingly bits like this, please let me know, because I think I'm going to also felt a little guy for my shoulder if I end up having the time down the road. In the meantime, I'm using what I know, and I'm opting to wet felt this between my hands, like you would to join two bits of yarn together. This was slightly problematic with the wire inside. Voila, le finished lobster head. Ding. We're not quite finished though. We've got to give our little guy some eyeballs for maximum cuteness. I didn't buy any black, so I pulled apart some black wool yarn from my stash and got stabby. There is something particularly disturbing about stabbing this guy straight in the eyeballs. He's so cute! He's so fuzzy! The amount of joy that this stupid little thing brings me is just insane. <laughs> All right, now that we have our adorable little guy, we are going to turn him into a hat. I've got a top and a bottom round and a flexible cardboard round. Now I really like to use like envelope boxes or beer boxes, that kind of cardboard. The name is escaping me right now, but editing Jackie will put it on the screen. It's nice and stable, it's free and we're recycling and it's much cheaper in that case than using buckram. However, you can't sew through this. So we're gonna have to sew the top bit and the bottom bit first before we actually assemble the hat. First, just a quick pin onto the top felt, which I covered in teal fabric to match my gown to get my little guy in the right spot. Then just an unceremonious hand stitching to get him nice and secure. This is going to be covered, no need to make it pretty. I like to use these clippy barrettes to secure hats to my head. Well, it's fantastical follies. So time for some extra bedazzling of the poof fabric before we sew it on. Life without sparkles is life not worth living. After tacking down the edges of the fabric, then it was time to do a little tacking and poofing. Poofs complete. Last step was to sandwich the top and bottom platters together forever.
this was a fun, quick little project and it's so cute. I just wanna pinch his little cheeks. Well, if lobsters had cheeks. The question is, what should I call him? Lobby the Lobster? Mr. Claus? Gerald? If you've enjoyed this video and would like to watch more lobster themed content that Rachel Maxey would be proud of, you can check out this video here on the screen. Or if you're watching it before the final lobster gown goes live, YouTube is telling you you'd like to watch this one next. That's it for me. I love y'all and I'll catch you in my next video.